There are a lot of passages in the scriptures that uh, kind of speak the reality of what they say into our hearts. Like a lot of times for me, it's uh, the passage from uh, Matthew chapter 11. Come to me, all you who labor and are burdened, and I will give you rest. I pray that a lot at the end of uh, people's lives and uh, for them in that moment and for their family as well. But, you know, for, for us, no matter when we're in search of rest or really in need of it, you know, when the Lord says that, you know, the promise is almost a reality even as we read the scriptures. There's something like that in the, the book of wisdom today. Not, not quite exactly. It's more like when we hear these words, it almost kind of just stops us in our tracks more than, you know, speaks the, the reality into our, or uh, makes, the, makes, the, makes the reality a reality in our hearts. But uh, that line is, you know, God did not create death. Right? God did not create death. Nor does he rejoice in the destruction of the living. Right? And when we hear this line, and it's like, okay, all right. You know, like mentally I might know that, but like, all right, where, well, where does it come from? You know, I think that's one of our big, our big uh, mysteries to, to really enter in and understand. You know, we, we have this desire to really know, like, where did this come from? Well, again, the scripture says plainly, you know, death came into the world through the envy of the devil. Okay, all right, well, there's the explanation, right? And again, I said it's not the exact same thing as, you know, the Lord speaking, you know, peace into our hearts, but it stops us in our tracks and makes us stop and reflect. You know, throughout our lives, we... You know, we, we know something of this reality of life and death, of light and darkness, and, and we know something, at least, you know, in our minds, intellectually, about, you know, God being all good, all light, all, all truth, all love, all, all the goods, right? All the goods. But we experience something of the bads, right? So along the way, you know, our hearts get twisted up a little bit, and, you know, we give God, God credit for all the things, even, even the ones that, that he's not responsible for. But, you know, death entering into the world, you know, I think we can think about it a couple of ways. I think these are, these are good examples. Now, all analogies limp, but I think these are pretty good, right? Imagine two little kids playing with Legos, right? And I know this is ridiculous, right? I'm talking about God creating the world. I'm talking about a kid with Legos, right? But a kid creates this a beautiful, a, a, a beautiful ship, right, out of his Legos, right? And his brother sees it, and, and he, didn't, he wasn't able to do that. And he goes over and he smashes the Legos, right? There's something of that in the devil allowing death to enter into the world. God created something so good, so beautiful, so incredibly awesome. And the enemy wants to come and smash it. Maybe a step closer to the truth would be like uh, the Pietà by Michelangelo, right? He creates this incredible sculpture, right? One of the most beautiful works of art in the history of the world. One of the most recognizable and, um, you know, most seen uh, works of art in, 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 all of, in all of Europe, really. But in 1972, a man jumps the altar rail with a hammer and smashes 12 times the Pietà and damages it. It's like that a little bit more, right? But the reality is, like, think about the two kids with the Legos, right? You're not gonna, you're not gonna say that the one who created the the ship was the was the one who was responsible for damaging it. If his brother came in and smashed the Legos, right? You're not gonna say that Michelangelo was the one who destroyed, if you will, the the Pietà when it was somebody else hundreds of years later who came in and smashed it with a hammer. Right? You're not going to give credit to the one who dam- you're not going to give credit to the artist for the damage that was done by somebody else. Right? And it's the same way with the work of creation. We're not going to give God the credit for the damage done when it was done by somebody else. But that's the challenge of our hearts when we live in a world mixed with truth and lies, with light and darkness, with goodness and evil. Right? We live in the midst of that, and sometimes we get twisted up. Right? But God tells us the plain truth. And if we step back and and realize it um, and see what he says, you know, we get it, right? We get it. But entering into the reality of the other side, you know, we see in the gospel reading that, uh, that God's promise is redemption. God's promise is even better than the original work of art. The promise to be raised up from the dead. And not only just to be raised up back to the original um, to the original design, but to go beyond it as well. And that's why we have these two, uh, these two stories connected together in the Gospel of Mark. It isn't just about being brought back here. It's about Jesus entering in and healing uh, the issue that caused, um, that caused death in the first place. The healing 
of the cause, the healing of the damage, not even just complete and total restoration, but going completely beyond. So today, you know, just in a very simple way, I just, uh, I just offer two things to you. You know, in the context of our, our festival, right, I know this is another thing that sounds kind of silly, but I was thinking a lot about the people who have poured their whole hearts and lives into the past few days, right, and they're, they're, they're the most joyful people around, the ones who have completely given everything the past few nights. You know, Brian Tittle was at the doors today uh, greeting you. He, he didn't even go home last night. He was, he was in the kitchen doing uh, pots and pans until like two in the morning, right? And he's back this morning greeting you and, and look at the smile on his face, right? He's, he's just a good example of abandoning ourselves to the light and the truth and the love that God calls us to, right? And that's one way that we step out of the lies of the darkness, right? And really stand in the light of truth. But the other thing is, is maybe even more basic, maybe even more foundational. You know, think about the reality of what we've thought through here today and lay claim to the truth that God did not create death and he does not rejoice in the destruction of the living, right? Don't give God credit for something that he's not responsible for, but also lay claim to the truth of his promise of nothing but life, of love, of being raised up, of total healing, that we may stand in the light and the truth of all that is good in him alone. 